very good morning to all in the previous class we discussed about the battle of plassey and battle of baksa and today in this class we will be discussing about the strengthening of the company's power that is we will continue from page number 101 so now after the battle of plassey and battle of baksa the british introduced certain policies to strengthen their position in india so today we will be discussing about the policies. So the first policy was the subsidiary alliance and it was introduced by Marquis Wellesley. So he was the governor general of India at that time. It was basically a military protection agreement that was between the English East India Company and the Indian rulers. Now according to this policy. The Indian rulers who were under the protection of the British, they had to maintain a permanent British army in their kingdom. And the Indian rulers had to pay for their maintenance, that is they had to bear the expenses of this permanent British army. One more condition was that the Indian rulers had to keep a British official called resident at their court. And one more thing was that the Indian rulers were not allowed to appoint any other Europeans without the permission of the Britishers. So these were the conditions of this policy that is the subsidiary alliance. And you can see that these policies were in favor of the British and it was against the Indian rulers. So by introducing this policy they strengthen their position in India. Now let's see the next policy that is doctrine of lapse and it was introduced by Lord Dalhousie. He was the governor general of India at that time that is between 1848 to 1856. Now according to this policy any Indian kingdom which was already under the subsidiary alliance they had to give up their territory to the British if the king did not have any natural male heir or male successor. That is after the death of the king, if there was no legal male heir or male successor, then that territory would come under the British rule. Here legal heir means somebody who will receive uh, the power or the property after the death of the owner. So in India, there was a practice that after the death of the king, his successor would be either his son, daughter, wife or mother. But after the introduction of this policy that is doctrine of lapse, the kings, if they did not have any male heir or male successor, then this territory would be under the British rule. So this was the condition of doctrine of lapse. So this was also a policy through which the Britishers were strengthening their position in India. So this was about the two policies that is subsidiary alliance and the doctrine of lapse. So with the help of this policy that is doctrine of lapse, the Britishers were able to strengthen their position in India. So we have discussed about the two policies that is subsidiary alliance and the doctrine of lapse. Next we will discuss about the revolt of 1857. Now the Britishers have conquered large parts of India and they also started exploiting the people through unfair means. So the East India Company's rule affected the lives of many common people including the Indian sepoys. So Indian sepoys were the Indian soldiers who worked in the British army and the life of poor peasants. So peasants were the people who cultivate land. Then the life of the local rulers in India and the landlords. So landlords were those persons who owned land and they rent it to cultivate the land. So the rule of the English East India Company affected the lives of many people. Now here you can see that it was the Indian sepoy in the British army who finally revolted against the 
Britishers. So there were few reasons for this. Now let's discuss some of the reasons. So the Indian sepoys in the British army, they were considered inferior and they were ill treated by the Englishmen. And they were also given less salary as compared to the British officials. So this was one of the reason. And the next reason was that the higher ranks in the army were reserved only for the Englishmen. So this was also one of the reason. And one of the main reason was the introduction of Enfield rifles and the greased cartridge. So in loading this rifle, the sepoys had to insert this grease cartridge inside the rifle. But before that, they had to bite the top part of the cartridge. And it was believed that this was made up of fat of cows and pigs. And this was not liked by the Muslim and the Hindu sepoys who were part of the British army because it was against their culture. So this was one of the main reason for the revolt of 1857. A sepoy in Bharatpur in Bengal named Mangal Pandey on 29th March 1857 killed a senior officer on parade and this was the incident which resulted in the revolt of 1857 and later on it was spread to other parts of the country. That's why this revolt of 87 is also known as the first war of Indian independence. So soon after many farmers, craftsmen and the rulers of some Indian kingdom also joined this war. Revolt of 1857 was also initiated by Nana Sahib and one of his royal soldier. His name was Tantya Tope at Kanpur. Next is Begum Hasrat Mahal. She was the wife of Nawab of Awadh in Lucknow and she was also a part of this revolt. Next you can see Rani Lakshmi Bhai of Jhansi and she was also part of this revolt. Here you can see the picture of Kuwar Singh. He was a landlord from Bihar and he also initiated this revolt of 1857. So many rulers became part of this revolt that is revolt of 1857. They also declared Bahadur Shah Zafar as their leader and he was the last Mughal emperor of our country. However, the British forces soon suppressed the revolt but this revolt of 1857 brought an end to the English East India Company's rule in India and the power to govern or to rule India was transferred from English East India Company to the Queen of England and at that time Queen of England was Queen Victoria and she became the Empress of India and India became a British colony. So here British colony means that India came under the rule of British government and the Queen appointed a Viceroy to govern India. Here Viceroy is a person who is sent by King or Queen to rule any country. So this was the revolt of 1857. So we have discussed about the two policies, the subsidiary alliance and the doctrine of lapse and the revolt of 1857. That's all for today. We'll meet in the next class. Thank you.